This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Justin Strong and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strong. Joining me each week is the other host of the show. He's ready to jump back into the void, Ryan Nelson. Justin, I laughed so hard at Cecilia's reaction when she realized she'd been banging a really old dude for <laughs> 30 years. Yeah. He's a lot of orange. A really was. old dude. Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast since we started the podcast a couple of years ago, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoyed as we talk about the first three episodes of the second season of Outer Range on Amazon. I'm sorry, on Prime Video. I forgot what they don't like us to call it, Amazon Prime. Uh, but yeah, it's on Prime Video. Whether or not you are a new or a regular and would like more access to the show, you can visit our Patreon page and become a patron of the Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash the Main Attraction Podcast. You can get Patreon only content. You can support us at a three, five, ten, or twenty dollar level. And when you join up, we'll shout you out here on the show. If you want to add free access to the podcast, any level of being a Patreon supporter will get you the show ad free. Doesn't matter which one you sign up for. All four levels get the show without commercials. However, if you want additional bonus content, the five, the ten, the twenty dollar level, that's where you've got to get that additional bonus content. Things like bonus episodes, things like uh, chats that Ryan and I have with some of our higher subscribers. Those are things that you have to sign up for at the five, the ten, or the twenty dollar level. Uh, if you can't be a patron, though, you can help the show out by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We would love it if you left us a five star rating, and if you have time, we would really love it if you wrote us a review while you're sitting on Apple Podcasts. Uh, both those things do a lot to get to the show into the ears of new listeners. So if you can help us out in that way, we would really appreciate it. And we will read any reviews that you put on Apple Podcasts, any five-star reviews on, on the Apple Podcasts on our show. If you'd like to interact with the show, you can send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. We would love to hear any thoughts or questions you might have, any comments you'd like to contribute. Love to hear all those things. So head over there to your email and send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been two years. We've been waiting for this. Uh, it was uh, this was the first season of Outer Range was a, was like the breakout for our podcast, so we were really excited to have it back. Uh, this is the second season. Uh, first season, I know where I know. I remember where we were. We both were really on board with this thing. The first six episodes, you were really still on board with it after seven, episode seven and eight. I was getting a little frustrated by the fact that they just kept spinning mystery after mystery and they weren't really wrapping anything up. Uh, so I was, I came down a little bit. You were at a back then, it was Game of Thrones, now it's a succession. Uh, I came down to a lost on this. Uh, where are you after these first three episodes? Uh, you know. I probably would. I probably go down to a loss just to be, you know, careful of what they're going. But I really, I really enjoyed this. It felt. I watched the first season last week just to mm -hmm. prepare, and it was so much fun watching this again. Uh, I, I just really enjoyed it. And then these first three episodes, I thought were really good. It gets us back into the mix of the craziness of the, sh the show. Then mm -hmm. they add some wild stuff about like now. Luke is seeing owls that speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's got visions of a warrant cherry pie video, which, you know, made me laugh. Uh, right. I loved, loved the reveal that, uh, oh man, Perry went to find young Royal. Right. Those scenes were the best I thought in, in, the, yeah. in the first episodes. The, the, that was really good. Those were really strong scenes. And uh, I love the scenes with Josh Brolin and Lily Taylor. It's just, man, phenomenal acting. Lily mm -hmm. Taylor is just the way she acts like the world is, is you know, falling apart, which it is. But she right. will never fully show that. And you right. can tell she is about to have a breakdown, but she is so good. Uh, I like the stuff with the void so far. I've only watched the first three, but I, I'm in, man. I'm back in this world and I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, so I have seen. I went ahead and watched all seven. Um, there is a little bit. I'm still a little bit with the same issues that I had at the end of the uh, at, the, at the end of the season. It's been a highly entertaining show. There is lots. Look, there's. It is not boring to say the least. Uh, it is highly entertaining, and 
but I still get a little frustrated with the voice. Now I'm not nearly as frustrated. We'll get more into this when we get to the final episode. Uh, but I think I might finally be getting a little bit of a grasp on what they're actually doing with the void. Um, if you'll recall the very first episode, the very first thing we hear is a voiceover from Josh Brolin talking about the Greek god Kronos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they mentioned him a couple other times in this season. I don't remember if they mentioned him any additional times in the first season. It's been so long since I've seen it. And that's yeah. one complaint. This is this this show does not need to go two years. No, no uh, it's way too long. I, I had was, forgotten what year he would came from. When yeah, I, was I forgot too. I, like, mm-hmm. I forgot. Yeah, I yeah. I really hope they have a because re- they did not have a long enough for the screeners. They right. did not have a long enough recap. No, they did not. I mean, it, it would have really needed to be like 10 minutes long uh, to really get everything in there. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm really starting to think because, like, I don't know how familiar you are with Greek, uh, Greek mythology. Uh, I didn't hear it. I very little. So, Kronos. There's there's actually three different characters from Greek mythology named Kronos. And actually, they may not be they may not all be from Greek. There's Kronos spelled K R O N O S, uh, who has nothing to do with time. Uh, but there is two other ones named Kronos. Uh, there's one named Kronus C R O N U S. Uh, I can't remember exactly what all his specific things, but the one that we that is the most well known is Kronos C H R O N O S, who is like the god of time and movement among time. And they've kind of all been amalgamated into one character that we just call Kronos. Uh, and the more I started to think about this, and, and there's a, there's this, there's a scene, the final episode we'll talk about when we get that, when we get that scene, this is not a spoiler for that, by the way. Uh, but you, you'll see it when I'm, you'll know what, you'll know what I'm, when uh, you see it, that makes me think they are literally s- saying that this is being manipulated by, Kronos himself. Um, okay. So, like I said, it's I'm still a little frustrated about the fact they just kind of keep spinning mysteries in this thing. But when I got to the point where I thought maybe they're actually saying this is actually the work of the actual god Kronos himself, uh, even though you don't, we I don't think we will ever see a god then Kronos show up in this show or anything like that. I don't think that's ever going to be the case. But uh, but that he might be pulling the strings on this. I think that might be what they're doing. I just don't know if they're really going to all the, if they're literally going down the literal road of Kronos is playing, pulling the strings and doing his thing, or if it's just going to be more allegorical. Cause I thought this was going to be completely allegorical when I saw him, when I heard that speech at the very beginning of this thing. And the more I watched the second season, I was like, I'm not so sure that's that this is still allegorical. There's actually a part of me that makes me think Josh Brolin is actually Kronos himself. And he just doesn't know it. Uh, like I said, there's a, okay. I, I, I don't know if we're going to go down that road. I don't know if that, yeah. like I said, that's a, that's kind of a far-fetched theory on my part, but I could see it happening. And we'll, um, so we'll talk about some of that. Before we get into the actual, this season though, well, uh, what I want to do is I went back and listened to our, what we called a prediction podcast. Yeah. Uh, it's, it was really more of a burning questions podcast. We we yeah. did actually make a couple of predictions, but uh, it was really more of a burning questions podcast. And I know a lot of you guys are listening to this podcast because of our range. And again, thank you for that because when I went back to listen to podcast, I forgot just how bad our audio was back in those times. Uh, but so thank you for sticking with us through all that time because our audio is much better now. So I want to go through all of these questions slash predictions that we had we're going to say if they've answered them yet or if they haven't answered them yet uh we're going to kind of discuss them real quick so the first one that we came up with was can royal control the void because we had this question about it i would say it's still very much undetermined i'm still not 100 percent certain what are your thoughts well after three episodes for sure yeah Yeah, all right Yeah, after those first three episodes, I still wasn't sure. Uh, like I said, maybe they explained a little bit more in the last four, but who's to say? Uh, my second, the other one I asked, and this was my big one, are there rules for the void? As of right now, there still are no yeah, rules yeah, for the void. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another one that we want to know, who is Autumn's benefactor? They don't answer that in this, in this one either, in these yeah, first yeah. three. Yeah, they, it comes up a couple of times. She it comes up a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, still don't know that. 
what happens that leads Amy turning into Autumn? We still don't know after three episodes. Yeah. And there's a lot of hints. Royal seems to think Amy and Autumn are the same person. Right. He seems to think it. Autumn seems less sure at this point. Yeah. Uh, I think she's kind of thinking it. Cece, right. I don't think she thinks it at all at this point. It, yeah. Uh, you actually made a prediction. You said that Rebecca would end up not actually being Autumn's mom, and they have not answered that or, at this point, yeah. uh, whether or not that they, if she is or isn't. Uh, yeah, I don't know what well, that's one that you actually said. Uh, next one, uh, we wanted to know, uh, what did Rebecca run from? They still have not told us yeah. why she, well, they, did they, they answer that? They talk about, uh, she was having an affair and Cecilia called her. Yeah, okay. And then, and like basically, conceal can her. her so if you hurt Perry, I'm going to kill you. And that, yeah, that Cecilia believes that's why she ran. Yeah, okay. Like I said, I think that's what I came to the, I think that's why as well. All right. So, uh, this next one we definitely have an answer for. Does Perry go forward or backwards in time? We know he definitely goes backwards. Yeah. Uh, we don't know exactly when it's early 80s. Uh, yeah, he was listening to. George Strait, right or wrong, that album came out in 1983. So I'm assuming it's going to be around 83. I know he also mentions he was when they went to that that bar that they have. I can't remember the, the 81 the, championship. Had the 81 happened. championship that he was, yeah. So, so I would say 83. Yeah, 83, 84, somewhere around there. Uh, next, does the void do what you wanted to do? I don't know that we really have an answer on that either yeah, at this point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one I know we don't have an answer to. Uh, what did Autumn say to Perry to make him jump in the void? I, they have not answered that at this yeah, point yeah. because I had forgotten about this, that there's like before Perry jumps into the void in season one, the, like there's this conversation that Autumn and Perry had, but we don't hear yeah. the conversation. And right. then the next thing we know, he wanted to go jump in the void because that was a big, yeah. huge 180 for him because right, he'd always right. up until that point, he was like, you know, I want to make sure nobody else suffers because of what I did and yeah. nobody else. And then all of a sudden he jumps in the void and now he's leaving his parents high and dry with, with the bail. Uh, next question we have is Autumn involved with the mining company that we saw at the end of episode two. We still don't know if that's we the case or that. not. Uh, this one we have an answer to. Is Wayne going to die and what is his role? No, he is not no. going to die. Thank God and, he had a huge role and he was fantastic. Yes, and his role is basically to be chaotic. Uh, yeah. And again, okay, go back to Cronus. Cronus, one of Cronus' children. Cronus has like four or five different kids. Uh, the three that most people know, Zeus, Hades, and uh, uh, Water God. What is his name? I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Um, not Neptune. No, yeah, he's, well, uh, <laughs> So, but he's related to Aquaman. Uh, what is his name? I cannot remember the, the god of the water at this point for some reason. Uh, I think he was with a P. Anyway, uh, it's the water god. I can't remember his name. Uh, but those are like the three main gods. Uh, but the, another child of his is Chaos. Poseidon, Poseidon thank you. Uh, who, who is who uh, Patrick Wilson plays, right? Yes. Well, no. Uh, is it, I don't think his name's Poseidon. I don't know. I, I don't remember. It doesn't, doesn't yeah. matter. But uh, anyway. Another child that Cronus had was Chaos, and there's a part of me that is, again, far-fetched. I'm starting to wonder if Wayne is actually, like, Chaos Reborn, uh, because yeah. the, all, of, all of his children, like, rebel against Cronus and, like, trap him yeah. in, I think, in Erebus is, is the name of the place that he gets trapped in. Uh, so, like I said, I'm wondering if because because Wayne is out to get Royal, and so, mm -hmm. like, if he's actually Chaos, because he's just doing chaotic things, uh, if that's one of the reasons why, if that's what they're doing. Like I, said, I don't know. It's far-fetched, but who knows. Uh, next question. They definitely answer. Is Billy dead? No, he's not no. dead. Uh, we're going to talk about him quite a bit, to say the least. Uh, what happened to Luke? Uh he was okay. Yeah, he, he was looked okay. like he was dead. Yeah, he looked like he was dead, and then he was fine. So uh, that was another weird one. Oh, that's right, because we were asking after well, did he, he got, get he trampled like he by the. Trampled. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I was like, why did we ask what happened, to Luke? But that's because we weren't sure if he got trampled. No, he was fine, even though he's got some things going on, at the least. Uh, we were wondering if Billy actually gets the full, the gets fed the void, and if he gets healed. That was a prediction that you yeah. made. And he does kind of, yeah. I'm not sure if he's actually healed, but he definitely gets Wait. fed it. Uh, 
Lane was healed. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of weird. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Cecilia, why are bears attracted to her? They don't ever answer that yeah. in these first three. Yeah. Uh, another question they had: Do Rhett and Maria leave town? No, they don't. They, they try. Attempted but to, yes, yes. They attempted to, but they don't ever actually make it out of town. Um, what happened with Sheriff Joy? Is she was her going to like the late eighteen hundreds? Was that just a vision, or was that, just, or was it actually that she actually there? She's actually there. We now know. Wow. Yeah. Uh, how does Joy get back? We don't know, but we know she gets back based off she, the very yeah. end of episode Somehow three. Somehow she so. found the void and came through the hole. <laughs> And she came back through the hole. So, and you, you, you can know that they're going to answer that in, in episode yeah. four. So, uh, and what happens with the investigation into Wayne's son's death? They don't really get into that in this one, to say the least. Uh, so, yeah, so those are all. Th- is blamed for it still. Yeah, he's basically blamed for it still, and they don't really. They yeah. they haven't gotten into the trial or anything at this point because he's obviously not there. What am so, I saying? Uh, he's blamed for it. Perry killed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perry killed him. So, uh, like I said, so but they there doesn't seem to be anything else going on with him because he's not there. So um, anyway, well, so Joy those disappeared as well. Do what now? And Joy had disappeared. Yeah, so Joy like disappeared. The first episode well. that you know, there's a lot going on. Oh yeah. Uh, hey, look, uh, I I don't want to go by episode by episode on this thing. I want to do it more by characters on this because yeah. it's a little bit easier for me to make sure I keep the first three episodes separate. So let's take a real quick break and then we'll talk about some of the characters. All right. So do you want to start with the role or do you want to finish with the role? Because he's kind of the he's kind of the central point of this entire thing. How, how do you want to do that? Let's start with the royal. Okay, okay he's, let's start. He's the star. All right. So let me just go ahead and say this. One thing the first episode I I was I had a hard time with that first episode because the first episode, and this is the pro, this is one of the main problems I had with the show, the way it ended, because I kept saying it, it's spinning all kinds of different mysteries. It's spinning so much. It's spinning so much. This first episode, there's too much going on. And it's a, just a byproduct of where the season two ended. And it's a byproduct. In fact, there's two years between seasons. So you're trying yeah. to catch a lot of people. You're trying to catch everybody up on right. a lot of different storylines. Cause this thing is jumping all over the place in the first episode. And I was struggling with the first episode, second and third, it kind of calms down. Thankfully. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have but, the same issue though. I did. I was really strange. Even the second time I watched it, I was like, there's, there's too much going on here. And like I said, it's, it's just a byproduct of the fact that there's been two years yeah. And they just had so many different things going on because right. you've got the stuff going on with Wayne, you got stuff going on with Billy, you got the stuff going on with Luke, you got Roy having all of his issues, you got Alden, they got to figure out how they're doing. Yeah. Uh, then they got Perry and Joy who are in completely different right. times. Uh, so, like I said, I was struggling with that those uh, that first episode. It's it slows down a good bit in episodes two and three, and yeah, I was like, does, okay, for sure, this is better. So, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about Royal. So. Basically, with Royal in these first three episodes, honestly, you could just kind of sum up Royal's character. Uh, I want to, I'm going I'm to I'm say a little bit of curse word here. So, apologies to everybody. His basically, like his entire arc, could be just summed up with it every time he says, "God damn it!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. saying it a lot. Yeah. Like everything just leads to him saying, "God damn it!" Uh, it just kind of like overwhelmed it with everything. Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts about Royal in these first three episodes? Yeah, his was uh, like nothing went like he thought it was going to go, and it was no. one issue after another. Yeah, uh, you know, it's Cecilia. He's trying to be honest with her, so he told right. her, you know, the truth about where right. he came from. He's trying to be more honest about stuff that's going on. And then, like, he's lost both his kids. He's lost his granddaughter. He's right. about to lose his land. Everything that could possibly could go wrong did yeah. for, for poor Royal. Wayne is just a pain in the butt. Yeah. You know, and, and he's trying to be more of a pain. Uh, so, yeah, I, you actually, you know, this is a very anti-hero uh character because you yeah. know he's the lead but he's still anti-hero it's kind of hard to fully root for royal because like he's not the greatest guy no he's not he, he's not the greatest guy at all but i think you're right about that he's he's trying to make the best of yeah. bad situations all around him and i think anti-hero is probably the best way to describe him because he's 
he's not the best person. I mean, yeah. he tried to kill, he tried to shoot Bill, but they were trying to kill him as well. So, I mean, right. it kind of goes both ways. Uh, he's trying to cover up a murder for, that his son committed, and his son has now run off into a completely different timeline. Um, so, like I said, I'm with you. He's in, a, he's in a tough spot. He's not really the easiest person to like. But he is he's incredibly interesting. There's there, yeah, that's the one sure. thing that he has going for him is, is, you know, this guy who jumped into a hole and emerged like 80 years later uh, and just everything that's kind of how his life has transpired right. from that point is it's it's fascinating to watch. And it's interesting to see how he kind of goes goes about things throughout the course of these first three episodes. Um, obviously, he is. He believes that Autumn is his is actually Amy. Uh, speaking of Amy, that's kind of the biggest problem this show has. It's got the Stranger Things problem going on because yeah. she's supposed to be eight going on nine. She does not look it. Uh, yeah. She's she's nearly I think she is 13 now. And so when they shot this, she was like 12. So, uh, yeah, that's she likes that. She doesn't look anywhere close to eight or nine. But uh at I least they one... didn't lost her like walled on loss to just get rid of her altogether. True, they didn't do that. Uh, we'll see what happens with, with a, a potential season three if they ever go down that road. So, yeah, uh, I was so curious to see if him thinking that she was Amy and like might make him warm up to her, and it yeah. really kind of didn't. Uh, what were your thoughts no, about that? Yeah, yeah, he, he didn't warm up to her at all, like he. Attempted to a little bit, right? He tried the, to. You no, know, when he when he took her to the hospital, but after that, no. I think Cecilia and Autumn have gotten along a lot better. Yeah, I think that's true. I think they've gotten along a lot better as well. Yeah, he he really hasn't. Uh, he he still does not trust her, nor would anyone want to trust yeah. Autumn. I thought also, again, the things that frustrated me, like especially in this this first one, when they look up at the stars, like when he touches her hand and yeah. grabs her in the car, in the truck, or whatever it is, and the stars do that weird thing in the sky, mm -hmm. I'm like, why are that? Why is that happening? Why, why is this going on? And why is this taking place? And it, as soon as he lets go, it stops. So, yeah. I, like I said, I don't know. The, those things are the things that frustrate me about this show. It's like I said, it's incredibly interesting. It's incredibly captivating. But See, I have the opposite. I think that's cool. That's like weird stuff just keeps happening. Yeah, but I got to know. At some point, yeah. I've got to know why it's happening. That's yeah. the thing. I've got to know why it's happening, and they don't ever seem to want to tell us why some of this stuff is, is actually happening. So, uh, I right, talk about. Uh, you want to talk about next, Cece? Yeah, let's talk about Cece. Uh, she is. I'm not trying to think. What's the best way to describe Cece? She's just kind of coping with everything. She's being yeah. hit with a lot. Oh, yeah. uh, they don't even mention the bear stuff again in, in these first three right. episodes. And I will say this: the this uh, this season is being done by a different showrunner than the first season. Uh, I, there are times when I think that it showed, and there were times that I thought it was like, okay, that I can kind of see where they're still keeping some of the same three lines. But there are some times when I think that the, the change in showrunners, like. The fact that they don't mention the bears in the first three yeah. episodes. The fact yeah. that we don't mention uh, that conversation between Tom and, and Autumn. I think that's yeah. probably – I think that just, is just the difference going from one showrunner to the next. But um, I, I think she's just trying to cope. She's being confronted with uh, – Royal is basically telling her, you know, your granddaughter's actually up there. That's actually – Autumn is actually Amy. Uh, I'm actually from the 1800s. Here's my birth announcement. Yeah. Uh she doesn't know what to do with any of this, and that's very right. obvious in the in episode three when after she's been after Royal has shown her the birth announcement, like, what do I do with this? I don't really know what to make of this, and the void isn't there anymore, yeah. uh, even though when they go to look at it. So, what were your thoughts about Cece? I, I I love this character, especially the way Lily Taylor plays it. I thought her acting is maybe the strongest on the show. Uh, she's just so good. Like I said earlier the weight of the world is coming down on her and she doesn't right. want to show the full emotion. And she still is, you know, trying to be faith in God and going to church, even though right. everyone hates her. You know, yeah. I love the scene that she had with the people at the, at the, the people at the bank that no longer, you know, want her yeah. money or take care of her, even though she took care of them. Like she feels like she's about to snap. Yeah, she does. It feels very much that that that, that is the case. And uh, 
what happens with her in the rest of the season is always going to be fun to watch because she is doing such a good job. I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, like I said, it's she's just being hit with a whole lot of different things. I, yeah. I don't, and she had points. It seems like she's getting overwhelmed, and the, the town has basically turned on her because yeah. Tom confesses to killing Perry. Uh, what Perry? I'm sorry, yeah, Perry. Tom is the no, actual no. actor's name. Yeah, uh, Perry admits to killing. Uh, what was that kid's name? I can't remember the the. Trevor. Trevor. Uh, he actually admitted to killing Trevor. He actually confessed to it. So the town has kind of turned on on them because his he, their son committed murder. Uh, and, you know, it was a it was a crime of passion to say the least. It wouldn't be first-degree murder, but nevertheless, it still, he killed the guy. So uh, she's just doing the best she can, and it's not always that easy to deal with things because she's still dealing with the fact that Amy's gone. She doesn't know where Amy has, has run off to. Um, she's dealing with that. She's doing her best to try to find her. She's trying to save her land, so she got she's got a lot going on. Uh, Imogen Poots is back as Autumn Rivers. Autumn, I was really interested in what they're going to do with this character because obviously I knew they were going to re- they were going to tell her that at some point that Royal believed that Autumn and Amy were the same person. I was interested to see how she was going to react to that. Uh, she kind of buys into it at, uh, at some yeah. point in this, yeah. but not completely. What were your thoughts about her? Yeah, she was toned down just a little bit. She was. Mm-hmm. Uh, when she started to find religion, I was like, I'm scared and so <laughs> fascinated by this. Uh, you know, she still has that connection to Billy. Yeah. And now she's trying to do something with Luke. Well, if you remember, this is one of the things I thought that was interesting because they make the thing where she's kind of getting this connection with Billy towards the end of season one. But if you remember the flashback that, or the flash forward, when at the end of episode two of season one, Luke is there with her oh, that's and right. Billy is nowhere to be found that's in, in, right. in that. So I think I, I was expecting them to develop some kind of relationship between Luke and, yeah. and autumn at some point. And it seems like that's what they're doing in these first three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Autumn, you know, there's still so much mystery to her. You know, she's a frightening character because she could snap at any moment. But yeah. like I said, they've turned her down a little bit, which means is I'm expecting chaos from her the last few episodes. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll be interesting what happens with her in these in these last four episodes. Uh, all right, let's talk about let's go ahead and talk about Wayne real quick. Uh, they oh. Wayne. We we kind of had a criticism that Wayne was kind of taking out of the show about halfway through it yeah. with the stroke. I will say there are times when I thought Wayne was a little bit too much in this in this. Uh, I look, I love Will Patton, I love his portrayal, but like I said, there were times when I was like, okay, I wish he would tone it down just a little bit. But when I started to think that maybe he's once I started to open up to this idea that Kronos is actually kind of in charge of this thing and he's actually kind of pulling the strings. Then it kind of made me think, well, maybe the, they don't need to turn it down. Like I said, so like I said, you'll see what I'm talking about as you get further into this thing. He has they pulling him back in. I think it helps the show quite a bit. Yeah. But he is all over these the the place in these first three episodes. What were your thoughts? I loved him. He was one of my favorite things on the rewatch of the first season because I mm-hmm. forgot how funny he was. <laughs> I love like I would have never thought he would sing "Home Sweet Home" by Motley Crue. That was just a shock. Yeah, you that know? was weird. And just the reveal that him and Cece used to be a couple just yeah, blew my mind. They did me and, too. And then there, you know, there's obviously something still there that we find out at the end of season three where he wants to give her the money as long as Royal, you know, apologizes to him for stealing yeah. Cece. That was something. Uh, I thought the scene with Wayne and Luke at the end of three was really good. Oh yeah. It was, he was that talking was... about how he hates him. Yeah, that was a really good one. I, We'll talk about Luke in a second, but yeah, that's a that's really going because he obviously Luke has obviously felt all along that you know Billy is the favorite child right. and he's doing his best to try to cut into that. And there's so much tension between the two of them, and it just kind of boils over at certain at certain moments throughout the course of these first three episodes. Uh, and it does work really really well. And let's talk before we talk about the Tillerson kids. Let's talk about. The Abbott children. Uh, let's start with Lewis and Maria because they're kind of tied Red. together. I'm sorry, yeah, Red. I said it to Lewis, who was the actual actor. 
they were kind of the least utilized in the yeah, first season. Yeah. They're still the least utilized, and I don't understand why. I don't either because Lewis Pullman just has whatever it is. And he's going like, to be he, a star. Mm-hmm. He's on his way to being a star. And uh, yeah, he was not used enough. Uh, I like his character a lot you know he's the one you probably feel the most sad for because he could actually have a life outside this family but he can't get away he can't get away and that's maria's big thing is she's always like you'll never ever be able to get away from this family no matter what you do you're always going to get pulled back in and as they're leaving he sees he sees uh Perry's truck, and he's like, oh, let me go say goodbye to him, and then he gets pulled back in because Amy's missing, and he doesn't know that they need his help, so he's going to have to stay, and he's going to have to try to help find her. Uh, but, yeah, look, they're good characters. I like them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they yeah. have great chemistry together, but they don't have nearly enough to do yeah. in the show. Yeah, uh, especially for someone like him. Like, it was, yeah. a, it was a nice get bringing him back because since then, he's done a lot, including yeah, Top Gun Maverick and Lessons in Chemistry. And right. He's got a lot. For more he was color. one of the lead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, for him, you know, having him in here, you hate to waste him. Yeah, you, you really do. Uh, and maybe they'll give. Maybe if they do a third season of this, maybe they will end up giving him more to do, which I think they will. But we'll have to just kind of wait and see on that one. So, all right. Uh, Tom Pelfrey, he plays Perry. Now he has one of the more interesting parts yeah, in sure. this entire thing. So we finally figure out. He is headed to the past. Like I said, it's the the early 80s, early mid 80s, somewhere around there. Uh, and then we're actually introduced to young Royal and young Cece very at the from the very did opening. Did you realize of this that thing. was them? It took me a second, but yeah, it did. I did mm. it, uh, at the beginning, you realized it was them? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know what it was, but I guess when towards the end, it's like, oh, I bet that's, I, I said, I bet that's young Royal and I bet that's young Cecilia. I never even crossed my mind. Like, because one, the guy really doesn't look like young Josh Bro. No, funny. he doesn't. But yeah. like, it was like, this is the fun thing about cowboy wear. They're wearing the same stuff in 1980 yeah, that mm-hmm. you wear today. So it's hard to tell. So I was surprised by that. But I, I when, when they, when he goes back, you know, Perry goes back and says, I, w- I was told to ask for Royal Abbott. I was like, oh, my God, I did not see that coming. That was a fun reveal. Yeah, like I said, I, for whatever reason, I, I figured that was the, what they were doing with those two characters. Is I was like, otherwise, I didn't know why we, you would even be with these two characters to begin with. So that was kind of my, my thinking. I was like, I bet this is Young Royal and Young CC. Uh, but Young Royal is played by Christian James. Young CC is really played good. by. Even though he doesn't yeah. look like Josh Fold, he's done a great job. Yeah, they needed to give him a beard or something or a goatee. Yeah. They gave him a mustache, uh, but that's not it's not quite yeah. enough. So uh but yeah, you're right. He doesn't really look a whole lot like him. So but it's interesting because in the was the second episode that they that Perry tells him that that's his dad? Yeah, it's the second episode. Okay, it was second. I can't remember if it was the second or first episode. Uh, so the second episode, he reveals, he says, uh, he says, what I know, which is Royal says, what I know your dad. He said, yep, you would. Uh, his name's Royal Abbott. And he says, I jumped down the same hole. And he said, I'm your yeah. son. And I jumped down the same hole that you jumped down. And Royal doesn't know what to do with any of this. Like, why yeah. in the world would my son do this? Why is he here? Um but Perry, I don't know. I still don't know why he jumped in the hole to begin with. He doesn't. I mean, it, he talks about going to go looking for his wife, but I, right. I don't think that was the case at the end of season one. Yeah. I don't think that was had anything to do with that. I think this is where I think this is where a change in the showrunners is coming into play. Is they're taking that and they're kind of they're like we got to have some place to go with this. So this is the direction we're going to go with it. Um, but he's, he says he's looking for his wife. Uh, he's wondering if she might have jumped down into the hole as well because it's like she disappeared off the face of the earth. We know now that is not the case because she just went and went to like a battered women's shelter or something like that. Uh, but I was – these were some of the better episodes. And it's, what's mm-hmm. really interesting, and Perry even says this, Royals being a better dad to him here in this timeline yeah. than he ever was to him in his own timeline. What were your thoughts about that? I thought the same thing. I really like those scenes together, and and the the they have a nice scene where they're out at the ranch talking, and I was like, man, this is nice. And then you get the reveal that Wayne is there, young Wayne yeah. is there, and they're all together, and he's with Cece. I was just like, wow. And like I said, any time that young Royal and Perry together, I thought it was the best scenes of, of the first three episodes. 
And that one scene where they swap out Young Royal for for Josh Brolin when they're talking to each other, yeah, that, that was, was cool. really good. Yeah, that was that, that was, was a good. really cool scene. Because mm. uh, you you because what they're doing is they're showing you this is even though Young Royal is there, mm-hmm. he's seeing him as yeah. as older Royal, right. regardless of what he sees what, of how he looks at to him in that moment. He sees him as the older version as Josh Brolin. Yeah. Uh, I also thought it was funny when uh, he tried to call him dad. He said, "Nope, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not doing that right now." Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just the, everything about the, just those time the, those scenes in the past. Because when I first when they first when I first realized what they were going to do is they were doing Carrie in this timeline with his a younger version of his mom and dad. It's like, I'm not sure this is really going to work, but they ended up being some of the better scenes of these first three episodes uh, because Perry is just learning quite a bit that he should have already learned prior to this point in his life, but he just didn't have the tutelage that his actual father was, was willing to give him. So, uh, but yeah, those I think were some of the better ones. Uh, Luke. So we kind of talked about Luke a second ago, Luke, uh, Tillerson played by Sean Sipos. I think it was Sipos. We're, we're, we're not really sure how he pronounces his name. Uh, we saw him previously in second season of Reacher, uh, as well as the first season of Outer Range. He's got he's having issues, but his all of his issues that he has, you can pretty much directly translate to him consuming the void or being the void having something to do with him. Because every time he starts hearing owls talk or anything mm-hmm. else. Yeah, the music, the 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 Motley Crue song, uh, not was Motley Crue, Warrant, Warrant uh, yeah. Cherry Pie. Uh, every time something like that is happening, it's because he's had ingested somehow or had something to do with the void being inside of his system. Uh, what were your thoughts about Luke in these first three episodes? You know what? And I don't know if it's because we just watched him in Reacher, and he was he was actually really good in Reacher season yeah, two. He was. he was much more of a sympathetic character, and I don't he know. Was. I don't know if it's because of his role in Reacher, and I like the actor more because I remember right. hating Luke in the first season. But yeah, I was like, no. Luke is okay. But I do think he was more sympathetic because, like, Wayne is horrible to him. They make him take care of weirdo Billy, who really yeah. doesn't like him. You know, yeah. so like you feel bad, like of, and then there, his mother is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, can... what, what did Wayne call her? Satan's emissary. Yeah, Satan's emissary. That was a good one. I, uh, I laughed so hard at that. I think they had to, though. I think they, because if they were going to go down the road where he's going to be attached to Autumn and they're going to play a bigger role with those two together, which I think that is going to be the case. Like I said, because they, they basically set that up at the end of episode two in season one, you've got to make him right. more palatable to, to the audience in general. And by making, you know, just, it was clear that Wayne didn't like him in season one, but it's, it's far more apparent that he doesn't like him here in, right. in season two. And you feel bad for him because Wayne says, you know, you're going to take care of your brother. He, he doesn't know how to take care of his brother. He's, right. he, he's like he said, he's not a nurse. I mean, he's a legit nurse. Yes, he does. He's in too bad a shape. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm with you. He's a much more sympathetic character. He still isn't completely sympathetic to the no. least, but, uh, but yeah, I think seeing him in Reacher, I think helps. I think yeah. it, 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 that helped with it. And I think also, you know, they had to start going down this road anyway, just because of the fact they set this up with that yeah. whole scene in episode two of uh, the first season. But they also realized, I think they had a, a, a little bit more of a jewel than what they might have realized to begin with. Right. And then they did in the first season. So, like I said, I'm, I'm not surprised that uh, they're utilizing him more because he plays a much bigger role in this. Yeah. Now, who doesn't play a bigger role in this is Noah Reed, who plays Billy. Billy does yeah. not have nearly as big a role in this. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't even really have any lines until episode three. Is that am I, am I we correct? We have a vision of him singing Elvis, which was really good. Noah Reed has a yeah. fantastic voice. Yeah, he's got a fantastic yeah. voice. Yeah, I think three is the first time he speaks. Yeah, because he was, you know, he was in bad shape. Okay, so when they're at the hospital and he kind of wakes up and they ask him, "Who did this to you?" and he like pulls his pajamas or whatever shirt back and he shows the 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 abbott yeah. ranch brand is that where he got shot and like that made the brand no, i think uh autumn branded him they branded each other in uh that's right season. okay I, again this is having two years between i yeah, could not remember yeah. all of this so uh i couldn't remember exactly how that how that actually happened so uh 
but yeah, he doesn't really have a whole lot to do this. Now, again, we have weird stuff going on with him. And so he and his father eat the void and yeah. they have this hallucinogenic moment where like he's flying like an yeah. angel and yeah. Wayne is kind of like ascending to him and they yeah. like nearly like kiss and right. I don't know. It was just weird. What were your thoughts about Billy in these it first was, three episodes? It was, it was vintage Billy. Just yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. But entertaining. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Entertaining. There's no question about that. He's definitely entertaining. So, uh, I think the last character we had to talk about, that's Sheriff Joy, because yeah. she is really completely all right. away from everybody else, because she's Alf in, what year did they say she was in? 18? Uh, I think it was 1882. 88 or something like that? I can't remember exactly what down. year it was. Uh, 1883. 1883. Okay, so she's in 1883. Uh and we see she is basically when she gets there, uh, she's getting she's basically sh- showing up in a between a battle between two Native American tribes, uh, and she doesn't really know how to respond. Uh, she starts trying to speak in her native tongue to get them to stop. She eventually does, uh, but she's obviously completely overwhelmed by the moment. Uh, and this was the first time I started to think because there was a point in episode three or maybe it's episode two. I can't remember which when her daughter has a picture and she says, yeah. look, it's mama. It's it, it's yeah. mama joy. I was like, are we going to have to start learning <laughs> time rules to go yeah. along with the rest yeah. of this stuff? Uh, because I was like, I can do that, but we're adding more layers to this show, and this show already has a thousand and one different layers going yeah. on. So I was a little concerned, but I thought the we didn't spend a lot of time in the this yeah. timeline of hers. Obviously, we're going to spend quite a bit of the timeline in episode four. Uh, but I, I, I thought what they were doing worked well, but we just didn't get a whole it. lot of it. I like how there was another person from the void yes. there. Mm-hmm. Who was so that's a morning her, star. Yeah. Yeah. Morning star. I, 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 I thought that was interesting that given him the, given her the lay of the land. Uh, and then like, um, yeah, it was just interesting that somehow she got there. I, I was just shocked by that and that she saw a young Royal. Yeah. The young Royal is there. Very young Royal is there. So, uh, anyway, like I said, that's, that's going to be an interesting thing to see. Watch it play out. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun to actually watch that play out. So, yeah. and look, we know something's happening in episode four because episode three ends with Royal driving to the void, yeah. uh, and she is emerging from the void. And they're like, and he says, "Joy," and she says, "Royal." Uh, so, oh like I said, yes. we'll see what happens between uh, all that if they are in episode four. Uh, any other characters? I guess we need to talk about uh, Amy real quick. So Amy's played by uh, Olive Abercrombie. Like I said, she does not like she's eight going on nine. Uh, she doesn't do a lot in this because she's with her mom. Yeah. What were your thoughts about just their relationship? Rebecca getting a little bit more of a role in this. What were your thoughts about that? Yeah, I just there's a lot more on there that I need to know. You know, that was. Yeah. I, I think they're also keeping her away a little bit because of the aging issue, like you said. Yeah. But uh, you know. I, I still don't know why she ran away. We we got some reveal from Cecilia about, you know, she found out she was having an affair. So, but there's still more to learn. Yeah, there's still quite a bit more to learn. So, and, and that's going to be an interesting thing to watch it play out. So, all right. I have seen the last four episodes. Uh, so I'm not going to do this. Do you want to make any predictions about what you think is going to happen to some of these characters in these last four? Oh, man. Ah, hmm. I don't uh no man I'm 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 struggling on some predictions. Okay, I'm that's still, good enough you what I have, oh, I let's, have, let's go let's go okay let me let me, not, let me rephrase that. Yeah. What are some things you still want to know about some of these characters? I'm still interested in the autumn, autumn a, Amy connection. Mm-hmm. I want to know about the void like how the hell did Perry decide to get there and how's mm-hmm. Perry get is Perry coming back? That's mm-hmm. I want I, I I need to know that uh again i want to know what royals like connection i think he still knows more than he's telling us i'm really interested to see what the hell happens to luke because you know he seems to really be connected to the land and now that he's had right. these issues with wayne i'm interested to see what happens to him 
Yeah. And now you've got Wayne and Billy together. So where are they going to take this? Are they going to team mm -hmm. up against Luke? So that's the stuff I'm interested in. Okay. Well, like that, that was probably a better way to ask that than any predictions. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll say some of that stuff they answer, some of that stuff they do not. So, <laughs> uh, but we shall see. Like I said, I think it's like I said, it's an incredibly interesting show. Uh, they just like I said, there is a little frustration for me just in the fact that they keep adding new stuff without answering a whole lot of the previous stuff. Uh, that does get a little frustrating for me. But in terms of like just intrigue and, and watchability, it's it's yeah. it's at the it's and really that, good for that. So the acting is really good. Oh yeah, the acting's really good. It is it is really good in this show. So. All right, uh, I think that kind of wraps us up for these first three episodes. Uh, anything else you want to talk about or we do our weekly awards? I think we're ready for the awards. I think we are too, so let's do those real quick. All right, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, whenever we are covering a season of television show, before we wrap it up, as we go week to week, we like to give out three weekly awards at the the first award we give out is the Tyrion Lannister, the MVP for the week. Who is your Tyrion Lannister for the first three episodes? So I'm going Coz because one, it's got to be Josh Brolin because yeah, this Josh show Brolin, yeah, doesn't happen without him, and that yeah. season two definitely doesn't happen unless he wants to do it and and, and is fighting for it, which he was. He was really yeah, he fighting was. for Amazon. Uh, and then I think Tom Pelfrey was so good in these couple episodes, and he had the most yeah. interesting. So I'm going with Pelfrey and Brolin. Okay, I'll go with that. Yeah, I like that as well. Uh, I'm with Josh Brolin, but I'm, I'm good with putting uh, Tom Pelfrey in there. Hey, thank you, along Josh with Brolin, for fighting to get this going. Yeah, because it, it's a really good show. Like I said, it, yeah. it is a little frustrating for me at times, but nevertheless, it's still really entertaining. So, uh, Next is the Agatha All Along, the best scene of the week. What you got? We talked about it. It was the scene on the ranch where Young Royal and um, and Perry are having that moment, and then he yeah. sees uh, Josh Brolin. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a really, really good one. I mean, basically any of the scenes from that 80s timeline yeah. I thought were really good. Yeah. So. yeah, the reveal that Cecilia and Wayne together was just crazy, too. And that it guy was. looked like a young Will Patton. I, I, yeah. I, I, so shout out to him. Yeah, I, I don't know who played young Will Patton. I could not find an actor for him on IMDb. Yeah, or so. it, it may not be on here for a while. Just to It may not. All right, next is the If You Come to the King, You Best Not Miss, your best line of the week. What you got? Uh, you mentioned it earlier. His name is Royal Abbott. I came through the same hole you did. Yeah, that's a good one. I went with another one from Christian James where when he asked Perry, he said, when Perry tells him, uh, uh, I jumped in the hole. You were, I was right next to you when I jumped in the hole. And he says, did I tell you to do it? And he says, no, good. I thought I was getting dumb in my old age. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Christian, ja Christian James is really good. He's good. Uh, He's really good. Yeah. I was really impressed by him. I mean, I was, I didn't know what to think of doing a younger version of Royal and CC, yeah. but I was highly I impressed by Christian yeah. James. So, all right. Uh, that wraps us up for this, except for our rating. rating. So let's do our rating real quick. At the top of our rating list is a succession. Beneath the succession is a lost. Uh, middle of the road forest is friends. Beneath the friends is a full house. And bottom of the barrel forest is a Baywatch. What are you rating these first three episodes of the second season of Outer Range? I kind of talked about it earlier, but uh, I'm doing a loss. As we have seen on many of these mystery shows, shout out mm -hmm. Westworld, shout out Lost, <laughs> they get worse. As they can, season. yeah. Yellow Jackets went down a little bit itself, so they can, you know, lose something in season two. So I'm staying, I'm really in it to it right now, so I'm sticking at a loss. I'm giving it the first three a loss, and I'm going to wait and see. But overall, yeah. I still think it's succession, which I kind of felt with Yellow Jackets as well. But uh, I, first three, I'm in it. Yeah, I'm still I, I'm still at a loss. To, you know, and like, look, I won't be that way the, the course of this whole thing. I do want to see. I need to start seeing. I got to know how this Void stuff's going to play. Like I said, I might have a better idea of how it's playing out when we get to the end of this thing. Uh, but that's kind of my biggest holdup for it right now is I talked about this when we talked about season one. Lost kept making all these mysteries. They kept spinning things. They kept doing yeah. things. And look, part of that wasn't their fault. ABC didn't want that show to end because it was doing uh -huh. so incredibly well. Right, right. Uh, so they just kind of kept. They just kept saying, "No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep spinning things yeah. out of control. Let's keep spinning it." They gotta at some point start reining things in a little bit. And I think 
like I said, if, if one thing is correct, it'll be a really interesting thing that they're doing. I just don't know that that's I don't know that I'm correct in thinking that Kronos might act, the actual guy Kronos might be doing all of this. And if that is the case, like I said, I'll be really interested in that. That's really going to yeah. fascinate me. But uh, I just don't know if that's actually what they're doing or not. So. Uh, so I'm at a loss, uh, but it's like I said, it's 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 highly entertaining. Yeah, uh, highly if it, entertaining, if not just a little bit frustrating as well. So, all right. Before we sign off, we want to give some things that we're looking forward to, some things that are coming up. Oh, that, and we uh, also yeah. have two more episodes coming. We're going to cover yeah. four through five, and then a fin- and then four through six, and then the finale. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do the finale by itself. So we'll record that on either Friday night or Sunday night. Well, well we haven't decided yet. So I just got to kind of look at it and see how things uh, plan out for me. So, all right. Uh, what are some things you are looking forward to? Well, uh, these are some future, uh, mo- a future movie and a future series. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, Shogun, they signed up here, Yuki <laughs> yeah. Sonata, for season two. Went ahead and did yes, that. Yes, it did. Probably a smart move, either way, because I have a feeling yeah. he's about to get a lot busier. So they don't know what they're doing, but they were like, let's just go ahead and sign him up for something. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, we, we don't know what, if it's going to be, you know, a, a, another series of the same characters, or it could be an anthology. But they right. smartly signed him up, which, you know, if you used him, because, like, uh, Ron Murphy uses a lot of the same people in his anthology series i would be right. fine with seeing him every year so they smartly went ahead and signed him up and yeah. said like whatever we're doing he's going to be involved so that's that's going to be interesting uh the other uh they announced two people two more people that are in the fantastic four john yes. freaking malkovich in the yes. mcu Mm-hmm. Let's go, people. <laughs> I don't know what he's playing, but he's going to be in it. Yeah. Either, but I'm in. And then Paul Walter Hauser. I yeah, like he's going to be in it. Mm-hmm. You no, know, he was rumored for a long time as the thing, and then Evan Moss Bacharach got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, I I love Paul Walter Hauser. I think he is a fantastic addition to the MCU. Okay, well, you missed the one that because one of the ones I'm looking forward to is is the big one. We know who the big villain is. Uh, it's Galactus. Uh, I can't remember who the actor uh, is. That. Yeah, because that got announced. I think on Wednesday. I think. Let me look if you can find it real quick. We know Julia Garner's in it. Uh, all right, Ralph uh, Innocent, who was in. He's been in a bunch of stuff, but he was in. Uh, he was in. Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. I know this guy. Yeah, he's yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with Galactus? No. He basically eats planets. So he literally oh. eats planets. Uh, he's, Is, like I said... Have we had this villain before? No, we haven't. They've hinted at him a couple of times. But haven't but we they, had... Pl- what was the villain in the Marvels? Didn't they eat planets? In the Marvels? Yeah. What did that villain do? No, that villain. I don't remember what it did. It didn't. It didn't literally eat the planets. Uh, okay. The villain, the Marvels. Uh, she like sucked the planets dry of their energy. That's what she did. Uh, but they're, they're like I said, this one actually literally eats okay. the planets. Uh, okay. uh, that's that's what he actually literally does. Uh, like I said, they kind of hit it towards Galactus a couple of times, but I've was been curious if they would ever go down this road because I've always thought like it's going to be a difficult character to pull off. But yeah. Emerson's got the voice for it. Oh, I mean, yeah, if you man, want this. If you want somebody to have like this big booming deep voice that will like make make you think fear and terror, he's definitely a guy to go for for this. Uh, he hasn't yeah. had any just his biggest role is probably the Green Knight. He played the Green Knight in the Green Knight. Um, but I'll be really interested to see if they yeah. how this works out. I, I I've been excited about the Fantastic Four. I've been excited to see what they can do with it. Actually under the reins of Kevin Feige and introducing Galactus into this thing uh, will be a lot of fun. Like I said, I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but it should be really fun. The, it, look, the we kind of knew that this was going to be the case because they announced a, an actor for the silver surfer. They're using the, uh, the female version of the silver surfer. I can't remember. Yeah, Julia Garner. From <laughs> yeah. The, thank uh, you. And like I said, and, and people got mad, like, why are they doing a female? It, it's about, no, there is actually a female version of the Silver Server in the comics. So, um, 
So that, like I said, it's not they're not being woke as all that everybody's trying to complain Shut about. But up, I know. Uh, so, like I said, we kind of knew this was going to be the case because when you have the Silver Surfer, you have Galactus. I mean, that second Fantastic Four movie of the original two. Uh, at the very end, Galactus is like showing up, but they can't show him, and there was like weird things with the rights and all this kind of stuff. That's why they never actually showed him. So, uh, but yeah, that's that was the thing that caught my attention uh, was when they announced him. So uh, there was something else. Now I have lost it. And I can't remember what it was that I was looking forward to as well. So, um, crud. Oh well, I guess I'll find it later. So, all right. Uh, anything else that you got? Yeah, appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I will echo those same sentiments. And as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.